Viewers may recognize operating systems as the squared rainbow or fruit themed logo that they stare at whenever they caress the love button of their desk and or laptop. But the big and often ignored question beyond what makes us partial to our own particular brand of software is what the Sam heck do these systems of operation actually do? Let's start at the beginning, before the half-eaten fruit or surprisingly opaque window makes its appearance. When every operating system turns on, a self-sustaining snowball-style process known as a bootstrap must complete an automated chain of functions that gradually increases access to system hardware and controls. Once this is done, the OS becomes completely responsible for detecting what it and all the other programs need from the hardware and then supplying that quickly. But imagine a world where every program needed to be written to interact directly with every combination of PC hardware. It would be chaos. Fortunately, we don't need to live in that world and special pieces of software called device drivers, which you can learn more about here, are loaded as part of the booting process. These enable hardware makers to write the code once and allow it to work on a wide variety of systems running the same or even sometimes just similar operating systems. So you're booted and staring at the desktop. What now? As soon as you interact with your computer, the software you're using will send out something called a system call, which specifies a task a hardware component must perform in order for that software to continue functioning and to send further requests. Then, once the operating system has registered these requests, it then gathers them for organization and processing. And that's important. So when a program is first initiated and needs some system memory in order to get up and running, it sends out a call which is received by the OS memory manager. Once that call has been translated to the hardware's language, the OS then slots it into an active queue based on the amount of memory it feels is necessary, otherwise known as its block size. When the program is later closed, the OS will terminate the blocks which it had previously allocated for it and reserve them for other programs or just leave them empty if needed. In this fashion, the OS is constantly receiving calls and altering queues, using system managers for everything from processes to files to networks and devices. So the question now becomes, how does the OS and its system managers determine which programs are the most important? Well, it's based on what we click, of course. You see, the second and often most confounding function of an operating system is to provide us with a graphical, well, usually a graphical user interface that includes everything from the sign-in buttons to the taskbar design and even that annoying little beach ball that never stops spinning. And if done correctly, the UI basically gets out of the way so we can tell the computer what to put at the top of the queue. Maybe say, for example, by maximizing it on the whole screen. The game! The game! Not the stupid antivirus pop-up that... Oh, now I'm dead. That's an example of multitasking behavior in your operating system gone terribly wrong, by the way. But without multitasking, modern operating systems wouldn't be able to share resources between different tasks, especially ones running in the background behind what you're actually focused on, like we explain in this video here. And everyone, yes, you nerdy accountants and you hipster coffee drinkers, everyone's computer usage experience would be a very, very different one. Speaking of different experiences, FreshBooks. Imagine if instead of running your own business by sitting at your computer every night and sending out invoices and crunching numbers on spreadsheets, what if instead of that you actually just spent your time doing the work that you wanted to be doing and you had a tool like FreshBooks to invoice, get paid, and track expenses through the cloud? It's an online tool that makes it so you can focus on the little details like, you know, actually doing the job and then making billing your customers as simple as, okay, well, you know, I'm a freelance guy, let's say, for example, I'm going to log my hours in my phone or other mobile device as I go throughout the project. Then at the end, bippity boop, I use this to bill it, and then 
the customer can pay credit online. So all the, the, the entire transaction is just much, much simpler. So if you're a freelance worker or anyone working for yourself, maybe start using a service that lets you feel like the boss that you actually are. Head over to freshbooks.com slash techquickie to get a free trial of their service. And don't forget to enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. All right, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future videos, and as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all of that good stuff.